You're listening to the Talkative Introvert Podcast. We gotta open our libations. You ready? Also, can I have a tissue? <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? Scoot back. Now I can hear what everyone else can hear. <gasps> you know? Exciting. That is exciting. All right. Intro time. Hello, everyone. My name is Melissa, and I am the host of the Talkative Introvert Podcast. If you're new here, thanks for checking us out, and I hope you like what you hear and stick around for more. If you're not new here, Welcome back, and you already know today's guest. Hello. Oh my god, that was so loud. How did not? How do I turn it up? You gotta turn it. Hello, hello, hello. God, you're so compared to me. Yeah. For people who are wondering, we are testing out um, actually wearing headphones while we do the podcast, which is what professionals are supposed to do apparently are very very professional Uh, excuse (laughs) me (laughs) so professional sorry about that okay so what are we drinking what is this jose cuervo pale sparkling margarita yeah Mm. not a sponsor jose cuervo always makes me think of the millionaires huh Millionaires. Oh, the band. Mm-hmm. The band in air quotes. <laughs> if you could call them that, what do you call them? Girl, a girl group. I girl call them band. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Stupid. Oh my god! I love it. What is this thing? The thing on my desk. Yeah. It's a that? it's a Dremel. The fuck does that mean? A drum roll? <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna lower your volume. That is so loud. <laughs> oh jeez, I don't even need headphones to hear you. <laughs> oh, I definitely need headphones to hear you. In fact, turn it up. You still can't hear me. I'm pretty sure it's turned up all the way. Oh, it is. It is is turned up all the way. You're just so soft spoken. I am. People don't hear me most of the time. It's very annoying, actually, because I hate (laughs) repeating myself. So not only can people not hear me, but then I have to repeat myself repeatedly. All right. So what's today's topic? It's it's it was your idea. It was. Okay, well, I'll tell everyone what the topic is. <laughs> Wait, I want to tell them. Okay, you tell them. Okay, you guys. So today we're going to be talking unpopular opinions. So we went down Reddit, the subreddit on unpopular opinion. Did you find it hard to like find one that you agree with? Oh, I misunderstood the assignment because I just came up with my own. Oh, okay. Well, some of it I came up with my own and some of that I got like mm-hmm. like bits and pieces from the subreddit too. And this podcast is not sponsored by Reddit, but I do love Reddit. We get a lot of good ideas from Reddit. I think I spend, I mean, I definitely spend the most time on TikTok and then Reddit, and then Instagram as my social media. There's just there's a lot of there's a lot of terrible stuff, but there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, dude. Like I kind of feel like I have to unfollow the Sacramento subreddit because oh, all those fucking bitches do is fucking complain. Yeah, I don't like the. I can't stand the Sacramento subreddit. I can't stand it. Either. He finishes peanut butter. <laughs> guys hear that i i know they can because i heard it in the last one i need to soundproof these walls so loud he's uh he's i think he's having cabin fever 
because he's always <gasps> in his crate. He can't really oh, go out, you know. Poor little nugget. Because when we take him out, we have to put a leash on because he'll want to run back and forth along the fence, like because of our neighbor dogs, like how he used to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he can't. He's not allowed to do that anymore. I know. Heartbreaking. And the neighbor dog's like crying too because it wants to like play with play. Link. Oh my yeah. god. It's sad because like they don't know. They don't know what's going on. Oh. Or maybe they do know and they just don't give a fuck because they're animals. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, it's sad. Uh, But he's getting a little like spoiled. Like he, or not spoiled, but like. He wants to move more, get out more. Like he really wants to go because we go on walks in the morning, but we don't anymore because he can't walk, obviously. Right. And then I looked up like that stroller that they have at the at the vet, you know, that they, you put him on. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. It's like over two hundred dollars for the stroller. And I was like, oh, man. And he's not going to be like this for much longer. Anymore. Yeah. I so mean, this isn't like a permanent thing. Yeah. So there's kind of like no point to it. I don't know. Maybe when he's like super old, you know? Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. So unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go back and forth and share. Is your, are yours like funny or like serious? Mixture of both. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested to see or hear. Who do, who do you want to go first? Well, it was your idea. Do you want to go first? Yeah, but this is your podcast. You should go first. Okay. Ladies first. <laughs> <It's> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, God. I love it. Okay. The first, the first unpopular opinion. So this one I did get from Reddit. Okay. And it called out to me. I was like, yes. And Re- I, it resonated with you. Yeah. I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but stop calling your employees your family. Oh, uh, that um, cre that contributes to a toxic work environment because. Like, oh, your family, which means, you know, they have more leeway to treat you less like an employee and more like a family member that you can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I, how do I say this? So when I got interviewed for my current position, Mm -hmm. One of the things that the director said, because she was one of the people that interviewed me, is that, you know, she she cares about her people. And she said it's really important for her to find a, a manager or like a leader who wants to who cares about their people, which is great. But then she went on to say, because we're basically a family here. You know, Blech. you see, we see each other more than we see our own family. Oh, my God. That um, is so like, what? It's such a weird thing. Like, it's a weird concept. Like, uh, we we call we do say like fam, like this is our family, but not. <sighs> but I don't see it the same way that she does. Like. I if I need to leave this job, I need to leave this job. Or Amen. If, if I have a better opportunity, I'm going to take that better opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have any. Is it wrong? To, like I don't have any loyalty to this job. That's normal. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we all go back to our families, our real families, <clears throat> and our actual homes. <laughs> You know, like I'm not thinking about them necessarily. Like if we, if I make friends at work, great. But if I don't, that's, it's not the end of the world because it's just work, you know? Yeah. This isn't fast and the furious and she ain't Vin Diesel. Okay. We ain't a family. You're my coworkers. The only thing I care about when it comes to you is you doing your fucking job. And Actually, I don't really care about that that much, you know? I do. Well, I have to because I'm a supervisor. <laughs> you kind of have to do your job. Well, I I care about my team to the point where, because I understand that they're human 
that they need breaks. They can't be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. And you have to take care of your employees because without them, there's nothing. The work will not get done. There's no company. There's no business. There's no money. But I'm also not going to call them my family and invite them over for Christmas or like, you know, spend the extra time to make sure I, I call them or text them or like, you know, spend, try to spend time and hang out with them outside of work hours. You know, like I would only do that if I ended up actually becoming friends with them. Yeah. That reminds me, I think I want to throw a Christmas party this year and invite my coworkers. Okay. You do you. <laughs> And I don't, cons- I do not. But con- you like your coworkers. I like love on a friend them. level. Yeah. That's different. They literally, my coworkers are what is keeping me at my job right now. Mm-hmm. Plus the free health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I think it's a weird concept to say, I don't know, to call them your family. Like, yeah. It's just, a, it just rubs me the wrong way. Cause I'm like, you're not. If I have to choose between you and my husband, I'm going to choose my husband, my, <laughs> you know, you and my mom, <laughs> you know, um, ew, one of my coworkers and she's older, like sixties. So mm. I, and I'm sorry, but it, it's just different yeah. from generation to generation. That's normal. Different generations do think differently because mm-hmm. they grew up with a different set of standards and they grew up with like in a different culture pretty much. Mm-hmm. But every time, not every time, but like when I would come back from lunch, she'd be like, welcome home, baby. And I'm like, bitch, no, you didn't. This is not my fucking home. This is actually hell. I am in hell right now. The place is on fire and my boss is Satan. I'm just kidding. I actually really love my bosses, but (laughs) no, you know who Satan is every person I have to hire for. Mm. So I have 50 of them. My God. I can't imagine that. That's fucking horrible. It's horrible. But I'm learning to become immune to their garbage and I'm my boss and I have had many conversations about this um, and hiring managers. If you're listening, which I hope you are, um, you will not be penetrating me any longer. You will no longer touch me in, in like a, in, in that way, you know, <laughs> if you guys could see Mia's face right now, it's priceless. She's just looking at me like, what the Fuck. Like your choice of words. Shut the fuck up. Penetrating me, touching me in that <laughs> way. You're an HR. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? Oh my god, dude! I fucking love my department because we are the most unprofessional, inappropriate people in the entire place. And your HR. Yeah. <laughs> We're work police. We can get away with anything. It's fucking awesome. What? (laughs) So is ironic the right word? I don't know. Hilarious is actually the correct word. (laughs) All right, your turn. Wait, is that all you have to say on it? Yeah. I mean, what is there? What more does there say? Okay. Okay. All right. Right along then. Kidding. Um. Let's see. Should I do a funny one or should I do a more serious one? Maybe serious and then we'll end it with funny. Okay. Um, I believe that 95% of people who are parents are not qualified to be parents. Oh, God. It baffles me how many people choose, like, well... Some of them don't choose to be parents. They just are parents by accident. Um, no, I, I disagree. Men have a choice. What? Well, I mean, actually. Not just men. Like, Well, women have a choice, too, sometimes. Wait, what am I saying? Like, peop- well, I guess it depends on the person. Like, if they believe in abortion or whatever, you know. I mean, believe or not, you still have that choice. Even if you live somewhere where it's illegal you can travel to a place 
where it is legal, like California, and they will perf- they will provide those services to you no matter where you live. You don't have to be a California resident. Daddy Newsom made that real clear. I guess it. You can also argue because now I'm thinking about what I literally just said. It is a. It's preventable. Oh, a thousand percent. You know, there's birth control, there's condoms, there's all so those other... So easily preventable. Mm-hmm. And I guess, I think the only scenario where a man wouldn't have a choice is if him and baby mama have like multiple kids. Like, let's say they already have two kids and she gets pregnant with a third and he's like, I do not want a fucking third kid. Well, what's his choice? He's just going to abandon his other two kids just because he doesn't want the third. That's not an option, right? I mean, I'm, I know people do that, but you're a really fucking big piece of shit if you do. So there are, I think there are certain yeah, or very like small scenarios, yeah. small number of scenarios where where they don't have a choice. Because you've you've heard stories where, you know, the chick is like, "Yeah, I'm on birth control," but they're not actually. I you think know. here's maybe an, an another unpopular opinion mm-hmm. sidebar. I think if you're a man and a woman lies to you about being on birth control or whatever if she intentionally gets pregnant against your will when you've made it abundantly clear that you don't want kids you don't want to be a parent but she does it anyway you should be able to allow to sue that person or not be liable for like child support exactly god it's so fucked up how women use children human beings as a pawn to get what they want from a man like how pathetic are you well i think also people always try to argue that well if they become a dad or when we have this baby he's gonna change no he's not he's gonna want to be with us or he's gonna mature no he won't yeah ain't never gonna happen the only men who actually want to be a parent are men who say that and make that clear and known. Like one of my coworkers, he has three daughters and he's an amazing dad. You can just tell how, because of how happy his kids are, Mm -hmm. but that's because that's what he's always wanted. He always wanted to be a family person, but, um, Yeah, we went off the rails there a little bit, but (laughs) I do firmly believe maybe not 95%, maybe like 80% of parents should not be parents because they're not good parents. Either you inflict your child with some sort of trauma, either intentionally or not, like, or you're just not... You're not taking care of yourself enough to take care of another human being. You know, you're you've passed on some sort of fucked up genes, you know, mental issues or other body issues, health issues. Or I mean, I just like I don't know, maybe I'm biased because I work in education, but children really today are just so different because parents don't parent. They stick a fucking iPad in front of their face and like they uh, let like the world parent them. They let social media parent them. And then they expect teachers to pick up the slack, too. Yeah, but the teachers aren't parents. No, you know. They're there to educate your kids, not raise your kids. And they're, they also ain't babysitters either. And, um, because of fucking COVID pretty much every student is severely behind. Yeah. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. Like you have seventh graders who are reading at a fourth grader level. Dang. Yeah. And it's, it's not because school wasn't wasn't happening in person. It's because those parents didn't take an active role in spending time with their kid and being present in their life and helping them, which is what you're supposed to do as a parent. I don't know. I just like it just pisses me off when you see like really shitty parents, mm-hmm. you know, like 
and they just keep popping out kids and it just like the cycle continues of bad choices you know yeah i mean i don't think i'm around enough kids so i don't know if i can i can agree with like 80 percent of people don't but you know i mean i guess i wouldn't be surprised either if that's like a, a true statement but i do see it like it is like it's so different they're so different and i was oh god there's this like video that came out it was it's been a while i think when this came out but like you've probably seen it but like the mom is a vlogger she's like a family vlogger and their dog just died and the kid is crying and like i guess it kept recording and somehow i don't know if she leaked it herself or it got leaked or something but she's like no go like this go like this like (gasps) for the camera and then the son is like i'm actually crying though and she's like i know i know but like for the thumbnail you know for the youtube video you've never seen that no oh it got it went pretty viral that's disgusting that's what i'm talking about yeah and i'm like what is this world we live in this like digital world we're living in where people are using their kids to be vloggers and make money off of them Mm -hmm. like that's insane to me again using your child as a pawn Mm -hmm. like oh my god i just i don't know i mean yeah I mean, I don't really like kids in general, yeah. so like I think I'm a little biased. But <laughs> um, I'm, and like even things like when a kid is acting out, they don't do anything. Yeah, like I swear to God, unpopular opinion. But when we <laughs> stopped beating children, that's when the word went to shit. Okay, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't support physical abuse at all. I just don't think kids are scared of their parents anymore because I see kids and I'm just like, my parents would never let me act that way or will never let me misbehave that way or Mm -hmm. disrespect them in that way. So I'm like, what changed? You know, I think like, did we just become lenient? Like too lenient? Yeah, they're just giving up, you know, and like, I think people are now because it's become more of a topic of conversation. I think people now are using mental health as an excuse Mm. to like be lazy or to not parent correctly or making excuses for a kid's poor behavior. I mean, it's one thing if your child is truly special needs, but like there, I mean, You know, there's got to be a line somewhere Mm -hmm. that is between special needs and them just being a fucking shit heel child, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry that my child threw this, you know, glass of water at you. um, But, you know, he's neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. I, I keep seeing that word thrown everywhere like it's just, you know just a normal or no i don't say normal um an excuse for everything and mm-hmm. it's like no you still have to behave <laughs> you yeah still have to live in the society and like have common decency <laughs> oh um i'm sorry that i robbed your convenience store at gunpoint um but um, i'm bipolar so yeah my bad mm-hmm. i'm just gonna steal all your shit now i mean that's a pretty like extreme example but it's like I just, I just think society is going to shit in general. It's kind of like how, I guess it's with everything, right? Like the Me Too movement was such an iconic movement. Women finally feel empowered to, you know, talk against their abusers and do all this stuff. But then you hear all the stories of the women like, um, taking advantage lying. of that yeah mm-hmm. lying putting you know innocent men in jail or whatever and that's mm-hmm. just like how everything is like this whole like i think it's amazing that we're finally talking about mental health mm-hmm. and that there's um there's a, an abundance of resources now people are taking it seriously but now it's like there's the extremists who are like well you know i should be able to get away with these things because i'm xyz you know i should be able to call out out sick from work at least one day every week because i'm depressed 
Yeah. So, well, maybe getting yourself out of bed, taking a shower, getting dressed, going to work, giving yourself a purpose will help you make, you know, will make you feel better. (laughs) Yeah. So I get what you're saying. Like this world is just, and I don't know if it's always been that way or maybe we're just adults and we're finally seeing it, you know, but I don't know. Hard to say. This, This world just truly disgusts me sometimes. And it's because of the people. Yeah. How was that? Was that serious enough for you? That was super serious. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, your turn. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. This one, I kind of, it's not a direct thing from Reddit, but something that made me think of it. But sports shouldn't be a multi-million dollar industry. Oh, God, no. It baffles me how much, Mm -hmm. and I guess not even just sports, just actors and actresses and singers and whatever, like the people in the arts, you know, because like, yes, of course, I love music. I listen to music almost every day, if not every day. And it's, you know, it's a form of like expressing yourself and it's important to have the arts. And I think it's important to have in our lives. But also why is like, you know, a soccer player making way more than someone like a doctor or a surgeon or an EMT or Mm -hmm. like a first responder, you know, like how... How are we make it make sense? Yeah. Like, how are we putting those people on such a high pedestal and giving them all this money? Because it it is it's consumerism. Like Mm -hmm. we're we're doing it, Mm -hmm. you know, like if people were less interested in like the Super Bowl, then we're going to see a plummet. But people just man, they love their their sports teams. I was literally watching the game before I came over (laughs) here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I always forget that you actually do. I love football. Yeah. Something about like those sexy ass men and those tight, tight little. <laughs> mm. Come to mama. What do you think? Oh my, I could not agree more. Like I'm, I love Taylor Swift. I love, I'm a diehard Swifty. I have a Taylor Swift tattoo on my body that is permanent and will be there the day I die. I absolutely love her. But charging $2,000 for a ticket to one of her concerts. It was $2,000. Some of them were $2,000. The average was like $1,200. That is How does the average crazy. fan afford that? I have no idea because she was selling out stadiums with 70 thousand seats and she was selling that shit out and average is like twelve hundred dollars a ticket yeah what is that let me take my calculator out she grossed over a billion dollars on this tour and she gave all of the truck drivers you know who drove all of her stuff around Mm -hmm. she gave them each of the drivers a hundred thousand dollar bonus wow which is nice, but it's like, why are you, why? And I, I don't think it's her. I think it's not her specifically. Like it's the music industry. It's the industry. Mm-hmm. It's um, like Ticketmaster and StubHub, like those companies that are selling. But it's like they jack up the prices because they know people are going to pay it. Yeah. But it's like, that is just so, yeah. 84 million. Yeah. 84 million. And that's one show, one show, not including like VIP passes or any of those like super high end tickets. Yep. That's insane. I know. I was looking at tickets and like the cheapest one I could find and fucking like nosebleed Mm -hmm. or like practically behind the stage was like $900. That's so much for barely anything. Like she's just a little tiny ant. Oh my God. You took the words right out of my mouth. (laughs) Like a little grain of a yeah, little grain a of little, rice. Yeah. A little brown rice. Oh, no, she's white. A little yeah. white rice. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. And like, but people bought it. Mm-hmm. People bought those tickets. They spent nine hundred dollars. And like, for example, like friends, mm-hmm. all the six characters or the six main actors, they were making one million dollars each per episode. 
They were on a hundred episodes by like season three and you're already making a milli per episode. There's 10 fucking seasons. Mm -hmm. I love friends. Don't get me wrong. It's my number one favorite show, but a million dollars per episode per person. It's insane. That's way too much. Like there was, I mean, I know I'm going to get the statistics super wrong, but it's, pretty much along the same line so i'm just going to consider it correct but like (laughs) if like if like the like if all the billionaires in the world gave up like one percent of their wealth there would be like no homelessness there would there wouldn't be people who are hungry you know like yeah yeah i get what you're saying fucking yeah i will never it's ridiculous i'll never understand it like i don't get it and like movie tickets are just going up and up and like but the move the okay the movie tickets are raising but the quality of the movie is going down (laughs) yeah like why am i paying more for crappy movies the math ain't mathin it's not Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. i will never never understand why like that's why i don't understand when people put famous people on such a high pedestal and like people choose sides and it's like you don't know the truth Mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on like the whole i you know the selena gomez and Haley bieber thing yeah like it's fascinating to watch because i love drama but also i don't care (laughs) and no one knows the truth but them you know yeah but come on we all know that Haley's in the wrong Oh, I mean, I it's, it's Selena Gomez. Like she can do no wrong. No, no. <laughs> you don't know that. We don't know her. She could be a serial killer for all we know. I firmly believe that there are way more serial killers out there than we know. about. Oh, for sure. There's some really smart people out there. Yeah. And, you know, the more people get caught and the more people want to talk about these like true crime and like kind of reveal the secrets, just the smarter they get. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to do what that guy did. Yeah. You know, that idiot. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, but anyways, back to the <laughs> famous people. No sports. It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. A Super Bowl ticket goes for like it's like thousands of dollars and you have to buy them like years and years and years in advance. Really? Yeah. So, oh. like, if you buy a Super t- Super Bowl ticket now, it's not only going to cost you thousands of dollars, not including the travel costs, the hotel, mm-hmm. the food, all that stuff. But you're not, you're no fucking idea who's going to be there because it's like five years from now. Oh, that's true. It might not even be your team. Yeah, probably or your not. rival team. Yeah. Or like, yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. So, but oh. you do get a pretty bitch in halftime show. That's true. And you get to say that you went to the fucking Super Bowl. That is so cool. I only like the halftime shows. I never know who's playing. (laughs) Okay. I love you regardless. I wonder who's playing this year. I just don't understand football. You know who's playing this year? Not the the halftime show. I didn't even know football season started. No, the halftime show. I don't know. I thought I heard maybe Miley Cyrus. I don't know. Oh, really? Hmm. I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was mine. So your turn. Okay. Um, funny or serious? Maybe one funny from you, one funny from me. I don't know if it's funny. If mine is funny per se. Or how? Wait. Yeah. So do you want me to do a funny one or a serious <laughs> one? Okay. I want to do funny. Um, okay. Because I'm just in a silly, goofy mood. Unpopular opinion. Sixty nine is not good (laughs) it's an awkward position that man's asshole is in your face and vice versa well i have a clean asshole so you're welcome (laughs) thank goodness (laughs) men are disgusting they don't have clean buttholes unless they're like really consciously and self-aware about it you know how do you do it successfully? 69? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've Sideways. never done it successfully. 
sideways no because then you'd have to like oh then your legs propped up yeah like the female would have to like hold her legs open of course the man doesn't have to do anything god i fucking hate men <laughs> unpopular you, opinion you men hate suck women and men i hate everybody you, okay i like you though oh i like you too and that's you know that says a lot because i hate everyone that's true yeah that's a good one though that's true it's a very like it's not good like how do you like when um what's her face ariana grande came out with that song Mm -hmm. i'm just like do you really like it (laughs) (laughs) or is it just a convenient thing to put in your song she didn't even write that song Oh, she didn't? Probably not. Oh, I thought she did. I don't think... I think pretty much, like, one of the only people who... One of the very few people who actually writes their own music is Taylor Taylor Swift. Swift. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I think Adele does. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Not as much as Taylor Swift. Okay. (laughs) Wait, was that it on that one? (laughs) 69 sucks ass and not in the good way. It's just like, because you can't fully focus because you're half paying attention to what you're doing and you're half paying attention to what's being done to you. So you're, you're not multitasking. Yeah. And, you know, you you should whole ass one thing, not half ass two different things. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. I know I'm very wise. Maybe if it's two guys, that'd be easier. Yeah, because they just stick they don't straight have to, out. Yeah, they don't have to like spread their legs or anything. They don't have to pull back the curtains. <laughs> 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 oh god, it's true though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's great for two guys. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Your turn. Okay. Instant ramen is just as good as regular ramen. No, you didn't. <laughs> as um, like ramen, like the type of ramen we get when we go to that place downtown that's across the street from Safeway. That really, really good place with like, it's like the pork broth base with like the garlic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oil. yeah. But I'm saying, like, the stuff you get, like, the Oriental Market. Not just your typical, like, not cup of noodle. Oh. Okay. Well, I've never had that stuff before, so I really oh. can't say. Okay. They make some really good instant ramen. Where? From, like, KP International yeah, Market? Yeah. Yeah. Like, all the different, like, Korean noodles and, like, the different, even, like, the Filipino like instant noodles like they're just so good like don't get me wrong i love ramen like i love real ramen but i can also eat like two packages of ramen you know in one sitting too (laughs) it's really good i don't think it's as good as like fresh restaurant that's made like with like homemade noodles you know but hey that's why maybe it's called just, unpopular opinion. Yeah. Maybe you just have more of a, a more expensive taste, more refined taste buds. No about that. I mean, I'm pretty poor. I eat like the same shit all week, every week. Do you really? Yeah. For the most part, whatever's cheap and easy, mm-hmm. you know, crock pot's your best friend. I tried to do the whole meal prepping thing and eating the same thing every day. No, I can't. No. I get so bored. No. And then it makes me want to binge eat something like terrible. It's just not going to happen. You know, I don't know. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. Prepping all that work and you don't even like, like it, you know, Mm -hmm. cause you're right. Like you just eat it all week long. And then by the end of it, you're like, fuck this shit. This is nasty. Like the same salad five days in a row. No. Cause a lot of, no, I did a lot of salads because you don't have to really cook. You just toss it all together. But meal prepping is just, you know, I've watched a ton of videos like meal prepping for lazy people. And I'm like, there's still a lot of prep. That's still your like your whole Sunday. I used to spend my Sundays meal prepping. 
Is that when you were in office and had to like pack your lunch and shit? Mm-hmm. Cause I, I got into the office so early. Like, I think I worked, was it like a six to three, six to two? I don't remember. Whatever, eight hours. Um, so I would have breakfast and lunch at work. And so I would do the meal prep cause it's easier. I just grab my lunch bag and go instead of like spending money to buy food out or something. Mm-hmm. Or wasting time in the morning. Then you could be late to work. Yeah, like I am thankful every single day that I get to, I have like, I'm privileged enough to be able to come home on my lunch breaks. I never have to meal prep. Mm -hmm. Like the most meal prepping I'll do is like I'll slice a tomato so that I can just grab a slice (laughs) of tomato for my sandwich instead of having to cut it every time. Yeah. The most prep, like one of it's not hard but it's just tedious and it takes a long time um is trying to make chipotle at home because like i'll do pico de gallo guac corn salsa you know gotta oh, make the chicken everything. make the rice mm-hmm. and like by the end of it i'm like this is a lot of fucking work i'd rather just go spend 15 dollars <laughs> and have them do it for me yeah even though it costs me probably not even fifteen dollars to buy all the shit to make it, and that it's, will last you like a week. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just one meal. I mean, mm-hmm. we all know it's way more cost effective to just make yeah. your own food than yeah. it is to constantly be eating out. But you know, at the same time, like it's okay to still enjoy the luxury of eating out and sometimes i'm so exhausted from work and i'm so tired and if i have a really rough day i just don't have the mental capacity to cook oh yeah if i've had a shit day at work i'm going to reward myself because i didn't rage quit by getting (laughs) some mickey d's on the way home Maybe Chipotle <laughs> or maybe a little little takeout mm-hmm. situation, you know? Yeah. That's my reward for being responsible and not setting the building on fire, you know? I will say, though, when I was meal prepping, because um, I, I use, like, a specific cookbook with all, like, you know, healthy meals... I did I I did actually feel great <laughs> like and healthy but god it, it was just so it took my whole entire sunday and it's just no and it's so boring and blo- like I don't know how these like healthy fit gurus do like this meal prepping every week eat the same thing every week eat cottage cheese in the morning like or just like um what's it called the overnight oats like every single day that's what i used to eat was the overnight oats because those were the easiest thing you just throw it all in like a a container and it's ready in the morning there's it's a texture thing though and it's cold it's like it's like you're eating cold vomit ew that tastes good thinking that when i was eating it like i go through phases where like i fucking love oatmeal and i'll eat it every single morning well when i used to eat breakfast i would eat it every single morning Mm -hmm. for like weeks on end and then all of a sudden i'm like this consistency this texture it's reminding me of when i throw up because it's like chunky and like (laughs) you do have a texture thing you have a you have a food thing oh yeah thousand percent I still eat like a five year old. <laughs> like I chicken nuggies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a pizza, the New York style pizza from Ooh, Papa Murphy's. Love New York style pizza. It was so good. I'm gonna get another one for next week. And that lasts me like three days. That's thirteen dollars. Not bad. Do you know the average American family gets pizza once a week? Nice. That's like the American thing. Which I mean, I get that. Like if you're a parent and you're working and you mm-hmm. got kids to feed, but you also don't have the energy, easy pizza d- delivery, you know, at your house in less than 30 minutes or whatever Domino says, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I, I don't think I could eat pizza every week. No, I, I don't can't. think 
I don't crave pizza. I don't think there's anything that I could eat every single week. Oh, I had to take that back. Ice cream. Oh. I have to get... I don't have to, but I get <laughs> ice cream every week at the grocery store. Because it's like, oh, I just love it. I don't care how gassy it makes me. I will never stop eating ice cream. Mine has to just be Asian food in general. Some rice and some type of protein. You'd like, say you ate, you eat Asian cuisine delicacies every week. Oh, we do have room for one more. Okay. Okay. How about this? Um, Wait, did I go or did you go? I just went. Okay. So do you have another one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a little bit less serious. Um, Chris Brown is obviously a horrible human being. Oh, God. What are you going to say? But I love his music. Oh, my God. I love it. It's banger. Banger after banger. I hate that about him. I hate that about famous people. Because I agree. He's a great singer and a great dancer. Yeah. <gasps> but god awful person. Same with like Michael Jackson. I fucking like love Michael a Jackson's bunch music. of famous people. Yeah. That's what I hate about famous people. I think the only famous people who aren't predators or abusers are just the people who don't get caught. Okay. I think like the majority of famous people are like, like there's something wrong abusive, with them. It, whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally abusive, verbally abusive. Yeah, because they have power, mm-hmm. you know, and they have a bunch of little cronies working for them, and they have people loyal fans who will protect them and who will like side with them and lie for them you know if something bad came out about taylor swift i'd be like that didn't happen they're <laughs> just lying completely just yeah like that's wrong that's completely wrong immediately no no mm-hmm. um but like with lizzo the whole scandal with lizzo do you think that's real honestly i do she you do she gives me like diva cunt vibes you know okay yeah like she just kind of gives me like super entitled like rude demanding diva vibes i don't really know how else to describe it but yeah because it's super it's it's so hard to say because how can she fat shame people but also be a big girl you know, like she, I don't know. But it's, well, it's not just that. It's also about her being like super abusive mm. to like the people around her, her dancers. the dancers, mm-hmm. the backup singers, whoever is around her, like threatening to like beat people up and like, yeah. And I mean, I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah. but I, I do believe them. I just, yeah. cause I don't think she just doesn't seem like a down to earth kind person yeah because some people are argue, arguing that their dancers are just trying to get money out of her or trying to like they're just mad because they got fired or something like that but it's hard to say because i don't i don't know i mean i, I wouldn't I be surprised that. if it's true it's what i'm saying mm-hmm. like it wouldn't like it wouldn't phase me to know like there's if there's concrete detail I'd be like yeah all right well she's famous it would surprise me <laughs> if it wasn't true. Okay. I mean, and people I don't know her that much. Like I don't even Well, I listen to some of her music, but I listen to I like a handful of her anything. songs. Not like the biggest Lizzo fan. Yeah. Like I don't watch her interviews or she did terrible in Star Wars. What? She was in Star Wars? She was in the Mandalorian. Seriously? yeah bad acting Ter- terrible acting and it's like why are you in here <laughs> like she's married to so jack black was in it and her and jack black are married to each other and i'm just like that's this no. is the weirdest couple ever it's like when um ed sheeran was in game of thrones <laughs> was he really yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay 
He like took off his it's just, helmet and they're like, oh, okay, that's Ed Sheeran. It takes you out of it. Exactly. You know, the emergence is it's not there anymore. Because when I saw her, I was like, what is she doing here? My God, why? You know, I could see her maybe in like in a comedy. It was okay in Hustlers. What did she even, she didn't really do anything in Hustlers. No, right? she had like maybe five minutes total yeah. of screen time. But She just like, she was. I don't know. She was just like a sh- one of the strippers, but she didn't do any like actual stripping, right? Like she was just like in the fitting room or dressing room. I mean, room. she had her titties out. Oh. Didn't we go see that together? Yeah. Yeah. Really I, good movie. I love that movie. It's an, yeah. I want to make money like that. <laughs> I don't. I do not like attention. Oh, I mean like making drugs and drugging men and stealing their money. Oh. I thought that was extremely heinous and they got off with like a slap on the wrist. No, fuck those men. But if it was turned around. Totally disagree. If it was turned around, if it was men doing it to women. Mm -hmm. Regardless if they're terrible women. Like the men would end up in jail for sure. Well, yeah. That's kind of like a double standard. But if the women that they were doing to were terrible so you would be okay with that if they were terrible women yeah so just terrible people in general it's okay to it's kind of like dexter you watch dexter no oh he's a serial killer um because he's a psychopath or whatever like he's got some mental thing but his he's neuro (laughs) divergent yeah (laughs) (laughs) but his code is that he only murders bad people I guess it depends on what his definition of bad is, right? Yeah. Like these are like abusers or like, you know, maybe sexually assault ass- oh my god. Sexually assaulted somebody, you know, like that Ooh, kind of stuff. I wish I could do that. Sexually assault someone? Oh my god. No, I <laughs> wish I could kill bad people. I can never I don't think I can ever do that. You don't think you could kill a person? No way. I'm no way. <laughs> It doesn't matter, like, uh, like even if they were just, like, an awful, terrible person to me, maybe for, like, self-defense. I was going to say, if it came to you or them, I think you would. Yeah, no, that. Self-defense, I could understand. But to, like, plan it out, and it's a deliberate thing, and to, like, you know, try to get away with murder. Like, just the thought of it, like, I can't even think about doing that. Regardless of like how heinous of a thing that they did to me. I don't know. Hopefully that never happens to me. So I don't ever have to find out what kind of person I end up being. God, this is dark. This is so dark. Yeah. I like Chris Brown's music. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. We're practically at an hour. There was only like two other things that I had. Okay. Do one more. Let's do one more each. Um, oh, this one's like pretty serious, but not really serious. Well, I'll I'll explain. Okay. So I said some trauma is necessary. And I say that because I believe obviously like certain trauma, like, you know, being sexually assaulted and stuff like that. Like I would never wish that on anybody, Mm -hmm. but like some trauma. And I say that because I remember having this conversation with like, I think it was like with Lily or somebody. Um, Cause we had a coworker who had a very privileged life, mm-hmm. you know, he, and he's not a bad person, mm-hmm. not a bad person at all. He was a good guy. Um, but he lived, you know, like middle, upper middle class. Mm-hmm. His parents paid for his college. Um, and you know, he, he just does very well and he got into a really good career and got a good great. Like he just lived a very good privileged life and Mm -hmm. you know, nothing wrong with that obviously because you know, good on his parents for providing that for their children. Yeah. But I can never be with someone who was privileged. Mm -hmm. Like I have to be with someone who had some type of trauma or had some type of like hardship because then we will never relate. We can mm-hmm. never relate to each other. And I think that's why, like, me and Brandon do so well. It's because we 
we don't have the same child, but we have similar, so mm-hmm. we sh- can share like similar experiences and yeah. we understand each other at a level that no one else would. Mm-hmm. And I think certain trauma can make a person stronger, you know, and more yeah. resilient to the world. Oh, a thousand yeah. percent. Like, like kids who are extremely privileged or like, um, whatever, like, I feel like sometimes they're just not prepared for the real world. Because they just had a good their whole lives. Oh, you know? a thousand percent. Like um, one of my exes, he grew up like with a nice life. You know, he had a real house, not an apartment, not mm-hmm. a trailer, like a real house. Went to Disneyland multiple times a year. His parents pretty much did everything for him. And so when it came time to move out when he was like 30, like he, like he didn't even know how to like turn off the water to the toilet. He didn't do his own laundry. Like he didn't know like how to be handy. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like do basic things around the house. Like just not a lot of life experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, because of how he grew up whereas opposed to me i've been pretty much like raising myself since i was 10 Mm -hmm. like when i was 10 it was my responsibility to get myself to school it was my responsibility to do my homework nobody was telling me to do anything nobody Mm -hmm. was showing me how to do anything no one was helping me with anything Yeah. It was my responsibility to cook dinner for myself, you know, if I wanted to eat that night. Yeah. And he didn't know how to cook at all. And it like prepared you for the adult world. And now I'm like fucking thriving. Yeah. And now, whereas these other people, you know, they're going to learn because. Think or swim. Yeah. They're going to be thrown into the adult, adult world. Um, eventually, unless you're like a trust fund kid, obviously that's a different story, but yeah, we don't know any of those people, so we're not talking to you, (laughs) but you know, the rest of the people, you know, they're, they're going to learn, but it, I'm sure it's probably, it was probably harder for them to readjust to like being on their own and being responsible for like their bills and, you know, getting stuff done and figuring out how to get an apartment and insurance and, you know, buying a car and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, t- but I completely agree with you. Like hardship, trauma, failing, failing, mm-hmm. you know, losing things. Yeah. Is necessary. Pain is necessary. It sounds fucked up and cliche, but it builds fucking character. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was like, Trauma is, you know, some trauma is necessary. But it's hard at the same time because, like, how I grew up, I would never wish that upon somebody, ever. Because I had a really fucking hard childhood. We both did. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you would never wish your childhood upon another person. That's why I do kind of wonder if, like, these... Because, you know, there's always a joke on TikTok and Instagram, like millennials are just riddled with trauma mm-hmm. and like just how you're feeling right now. Like, I don't want to bestow that upon a child. So I'm wondering if like millennial parents are just like super lenient because they don't want to pass on their childhood trauma to their kids. Yeah. But then now look at what it's creating. It's yeah. creating these fucking monster children <laughs> who don't listen who just run amok Mm -hmm. like one of my friends um like one of my friend's nephews like they just they're like seven and nine they just cuss they say really yeah curse words like it's normal okay and i'm like it's That's weird. weird. It's foreign. Yeah. But then even like when I go out in public, I'm still hearing like young kids use profanity. And like we have problems at our school sites with doing that. children using like derogatory slurs. Like yeah. you're six years old. Why are you saying the N word? Mm-hmm. Why do you even know what that is? Because kids aren't kids anymore these mm-hmm. days. <laughs> these days, God, that made me feel so old. I'm a boomer and I'm proud. <laughs> um, it's because people don't fucking parent. 
Yeah. They don't parent. They don't. They're not an active part of their kids' lives. They let them watch whatever on their fucking little iPad that's shaped like a frog. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, I just, I sound like a boomer, but I really just don't understand the world that we're living in anymore. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's why, I like, you know. That's why I thought think some trauma is necessary. I feel like people are turning more into like animals and less like an actual human being. Like not a lot of common decency, not a lot of common sense, very little spatial awareness, very little awareness about how their words and actions are affecting others, living a very insular life, living in this little bubble, you know, truly not understanding that any that anything exists outside of their own teeny tiny little bubble. It's very strange. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people are also take like constantly acting like they're victims too. Like, I feel like that's become a huge problem. Like I'm a victim to everything and it's like chill. Like you're not, not. (laughs) you're really not. Yeah. I like, I don't know. I know like like oh this country's so fucked up. Like there's, you know, the cost of living is so high and we can't afford rent and blah blah blah. But like I mean maybe call call it call it ignorant, but we really don't have it that bad here. No, absolutely not. Like, like when you compare it to like real third world countries. Yeah. Like we really don't have it that bad here. I think that's the thing is like, and if it's so bad, why don't you go move to another country, Mm -hmm. you know, see how it's like there and then come back and report to me and let me know if it was better here, (laughs) you know, go move to China or like some to Philippines or something because it's not it's not that easy. Like even even in places like Europe. It's just, it's not that easy because it's so different. Yeah. The culture is different. I feel like you just don't have much autonomy because everything is so like community based there. And these other countries are also super religious, (sighs) which I think people forget, you know, like Catholicism is like runs rampant in a lot of these, (laughs) these countries. And so like, which is fucking ironic as shit because all of most of those religions are made up by white people i don't think that's true catholicism because it like started like in the middle east are middle eastern people white no like i'm thinking catholicism like the catholics yeah like like old white people oh i don't know the history of all that stuff but anyways regardless of that but you have to adjust to that country's culture mm-hmm. and there a lot of countries don't accept american culture because yeah you know because americans suck because <laughs> there's like because we're different we have freedom we have freedom of religion freedom of speech it's like it's it's literally you know a melting pot you're you can be your own person not saying like i don't know i don't live in other countries i'm not saying you can't be your own person but i feel like at least from what i've heard from other people mm-hmm. it's just it's just very different than, yeah like they expect you to be a certain way mm-hmm. and you'll, if you're not that way then you know people will judge you that i mean not to get all like sappy or anything but that is like one of the things that is truly beautiful about this country is that there are so many different cultures there's so many different backgrounds religion you know nationalities races like beliefs Mm -hmm. you know it's like a melting pot and that is truly beautiful because you don't really see that very much anywhere else even in japan like um i could be saying this wrong but like the purity rate Oh, yeah. Is really high. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of mixing going on, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. here you have the freedom to choose who you whatever be religion, with. who you want to be with, what culture you even want to 
be a part of or you want to like yeah explore it's i don't know why were we talking about this oh because people feel like they have it so bad here Mm -hmm. but they've clearly haven't been to like third world countries or other places in the world yeah Yeah. i agree with that Mm -hmm. well this one's been a fun one yeah unpopular opinion i'm extremely opinionated i could literally talk about this yeah forever i am extremely opinionated i don't even i don't know a whole lot of people that share my opinion too yeah me neither actually or maybe it's because the people like me don't go out because <laughs> i don't like people <laughs> i don't know uh. <sighs> All right. Anyways, this was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed this very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the idea. Fuck yeah. I'm excited for our next our next one. We have like a list of stuff we want to talk about. I was going to say many more ideas up my sleeve. So many. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.